a major development tonight in one of the special counsel's investigations into former President Donald Trump. Trump is now facing new charges in the classified documents case. Now, he has already been accused of mishandling classified material and blocking the government's efforts to get them back. But late this afternoon, the special counsel released a superseding indictment, adding three new charges and naming another co-defendant in the case. NBC's Laura Jarrett has all the details. These new counts add a charge of willful retention of national defense information. Mr. Trump is also charged, along with his personal aide, Walt Nada, and a new defendant, Mar-a-Lago employee Carlos de la Vera, with obstruction conspiracy. The new obstruction counts are significant and based on allegations that the defendants attempted to delete surveillance footage at Mar-a-Lago in the summer of 2022. That third defendant, Carlos de Oliveira, was a maintenance supervisor at Mar-a-Lago. Also, Trump already faced 31 counts of illegally retaining national defense information. This new indictment as a 32nd to the list. It is related to a to a recording of the former president at Bedminster where he's discussing classified documents involving Iran. Well, with Milley, uh, let me see that. I've got to show you an example. He said that I wanted to attack Iran. Isn't it amazing? I have a big pile of papers. This thing just came up. Look. This was him. They presented me this. This is off the record, but they presented me this. This was him. This was the Defense Department and him. Wow. We looked at some. This was him. This wasn't done by me. This was him. Mm. All sorts of stuff. It's pages long. Look. Mm. Wait a minute. Let's see here. <laughs> Yeah. I just found, isn't that amazing? This totally wins my case, you know. Mm -hmm. Except it is like highly confidential yeah. secret. <laughs> I was just saying, because we were talking about it. And you know, he said, he wanted to attack Iran and what? <laughs> he said, you did. Wow. This was done by the military, given to me. Uh, I think we can probably, right? I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, we'll have to try to figure out a, a yeah. See, as president, I could have declassified yeah. it. Now I can't, you know, but this is yeah, classified. Now, now we have a problem. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It's so cool. Tonight, Donald Trump reacted to the new charges, saying, quote, it's election interference at the highest level. They're harassing my company. They're harassing my family. They're harassing me. The latest charges come on the very same day the grand jury investigating Trump's possible involvement in 2020 election interference met in D.C. So far, there have been no indictments in that case. And just as that was happening, two of Donald Trump's lawyers were meeting with special counsel Jack Smith's office. Back now to breaking news. Donald Trump now faces new charges in the Mar-a-Lago documents case thanks to a superseding indictment from special counsel Jack Smith. Back with us tonight to discuss former Democratic Congressman Connor Lamb of Pennsylvania and Stuart Stevens, a veteran of the Mitt Romney and George W. Bush presidential campaigns. He is now with the Lincoln Project. Congressman, what is your reaction to today's news? Well, actually, where you left off in the last segment was the thing I was thinking about all day. You know, to the extent that I noticed out here in the world in Pennsylvania that people were giving Trump a pass, it was on this argument that, well, they all do it. You know, Biden and Pence and everybody had classified information at their house. Um, and I think the allegation that Trump himself was telling his staff members to delete surveillance footage pretty much demolishes that one because, you know, the Biden team obviously threw open the doors for the FBI and, and Pence pretty much did as well. That's what an innocent person does. They let the FBI come and take back the documents. A guilty person tries to destroy the evidence. Well, then let's remind our audience of some of the things Donald Trump once said about Hillary Clinton and a server. Watch this. We know now with almost 100 percent confidence that at least five foreign intelligence agencies bleached the Clinton server. Then she tried to destroy the evidence by deleting the emails. It's also clear from the FBI report that Hillary Clinton and her top aides knowingly destroyed evidence and covered up their actions. 
After her private server was revealed last March, her staff deleted all the emails and wiped it clean using a software design to prevent any recovery. She bleached her emails. Nobody even heard about it before. And nobody does it because it's a very expensive process. And the thing that you should be apologizing for are the 33,000 emails that you deleted and that you acid washed. If I win, I am going to instruct my attorney general to get a special prosecutor to look into your situation because there has never been so many lies, so much deception. There has never been anything like it. And we're going to have a special prosecutor. She's smiling then. She's smiling now. Compare that to this new indictment that alleges a maintenance guy at Mar-a-Lago told another guy, quote, the boss wanted the server deleted. Stuart? Well, you know, we know a couple of things here. No one tries to change the rules of an election that they've won, and nobody tries to destroy evidence that uh, doesn't prove that they're guilty. Um, the, the tragedy here is that I don't think this is going to make any difference with the Republican electorate. As your panel was saying, they now have to vote for him because he has to be the nominee so that they can try to keep a former Republican president out of jail. So, you know, if you get inside their heads, they believe that there is a deep state conspiracy. What greater proof of a deep state conspiracy than to indict the former president? Congressman, Congressman, are Republicans on the Hill? Is the RNC now boxed into a corner with Donald Trump, right? Like, there are a whole bunch of Republicans running in this primary, but with the exception of Chris Christie, little Asa Hutchinson, they're pussyfooting around these indictments. They're not actually going after Trump. So if they're not, does the rest of the party basically have to say, oh, there's nothing to see here and keep backing him because he is the presumptive nominee? You know, my observation of the last few years is that we pay a lot of attention to the party officials, the people on the Hill and who they're endorsing and everything. But the voters have a way of surprising us. And I definitely haven't given up on the idea that at some point, some critical mass of Republican voters is just going to get tired of this or just reach the practical conclusion that there's no way he's going to be able to govern if they support him. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but I definitely don't think it's a done deal. You know, the, the voters in the early primary states, you know, are a long, long way from making up their minds. And I think like in past years, we're going to see little boomlets for different candidates like Tim Scott and, you know, whoever else. And uh, there's a lot of game left to be played. OK, but Stuart, you know, you certainly know GOP donors. Again, with the exception of, of Chris Christie, a little bit of Will Hurd, maybe Asa Hutchinson, are any of them really running? Right. How do you go to a donor and say, I would like you to back me, write me a big fat check, and I'm doing essentially nothing to go after Donald Trump while he faces indictment after indictment. Isn't that exactly the juggler you should be going for? Yes, um, but what we have to wrap our minds around is that the Republican Party is pretty much in sync with Donald Trump. He's not an outlier. He really is the mainstream of the party. So when you have that, and you're not really running to be a governing party. I mean, I, I, you know, I had kind of a going out of business sale on optimism for the party. <laughs> I, 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 wish the, I hope the congressman's right here. But I, I think that they are running uh, to prove a point to, it is a white grievance party. And what greater grievance than to say, I'm going to be for the guy that's been indicted. So I, I just I, I don't think that any of these candidates, um, except for the, the, the two that you mentioned, Christie and Hutchinson, both former clients of mine, I'm proud to say, um, they all say that they'll support Trump if he's a nominee. So, I mean, we know Donald Trump is a rapist. That's been established now by a judge. We know that he well, he's been going to be indicted for... Uh, has been indicted for espionage crimes, and none of that matters. So what what line can they cross? I just don't think it's there. It's up to the American people, if he's a nominee, to make sure that he's never near the Oval Office. Stuart, the irony 
The last big going out of business sale that we saw was from Bed Bath and Beyond. And who just bought that company? Overstock.com, which was founded by a guy who's a right wing conspiracy theorist. Full circle. <laughs> 